Dear Tai, Dear Sangha. This four part series is based on the wonderful work of Transformation at the Base, uh, work and book from Tai, most recently called Understanding Your Mind. So the effort of this series is to assist us in continuing to learn how to be in dialogue with ourselves. That dialogue is always going on, it's already going on, it goes on biologically, genetically, with the environment we're in, and it goes on with our social existence. Because we are born and our mother and our father are already present, as Ty reminds us so much. But there are others present, as we know. There are not only our blood ancestors, but our land ancestors and our spiritual ancestors, also within the storehouse of our consciousness. And so this is a, the first step in that journey of learning how to pay attention, how to bring mindfulness to the seeds that others have watered in us. And you can start by making, beginning to make a list, get a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper and just make a list spontaneously as I speak about this, because we want to work with that list uh, and practice with that list with respect. So on, on my list, I started making my own list. I have my mother here, uh, Viola Paris, who adopted me. Um, when I was eight months old. I have Ty here, <laughs> who adopted me when I was 45 <laughs> or 40. Uh, I have my uh, mentors, uh, people who have supported my development and growth, uh, a list of those kinds of people. I've had some teachers in school and university that inspired me. Uh, I often think of them and what they taught me as I live my life every day. I had a aunt uh, who was full of energy. She was always so positive. Uh, aunt Gladys, I, I'm just amazed. I was always amazed at her capacity to be joyful. And she did not have an easy life. And so maybe there's someone in your storehouse of consciousness, in your memories that reminds you or can remind you of the good, of the true, of the beautiful. This is like as in learning our first uh, practice with the five touchings of the earth. It was important to understand, to grow as many roots as we could is the key to being stable. And so learning how to work with these kinds of energies in a more skillful ways and a more mindful way is important for me in my own practice. These might be friends that have been close to you uh, throughout your life. These might be benefactors, people who've really, you feel like assisted you in your development uh personally professionally spiritually as a monastic or a lay person these people gave time and energy and resource to you to to help you be a more present bodhisattva in the world so often we are at this moment caught in the voices sounds energies habits uh, an imprints of anger in us. And so learning how to call these energies and forces by their true names is key to our practice skillfulness. And it's not just uh, unwholesome true names, true names of goodness, true names of kindness, 
true names of compassion. Uh, so when I find myself in need of watering my seeds of compassion, nourishing myself, I call my mother and I sit with her in meditation. When I find that I am almost weary with the work of justice in the world, uh, I find myself calling on the energies of Martin Luther King and the energies of Mother Teresa, both of whom I have encountered in one way or another. So do this for yourself. Know who is your inner community, how you can work as a team to embody the Buddha way. And each of us has seeds of criticism in us and imperfection in our minds, in us. Uh, and the self-esteem complex is always here, there just lurking <laughs> around the corner. So we're constantly evaluating ourselves and whether we're good enough. And this kind of energy and its thought patterns, it's really important to recognize the source. Where do these thoughts come from? Where is this conditioning coming from? And how am I feeding myself to sustain it? When I was quite young, I used to have a a serious uh, self-esteem complex for obvious reasons and not obvious reasons. And I eventually learned that that was just what it was. It was a, a complex um, and that I didn't have to live inside of the chains of that complex. It's one of the things I appreciate so much more of the enduring presence and practice of Thai and Plum Village is holding the light up uh, and being able to turn the light in so we can transform the without. One more thing about this that's important as you're making your list, and I hope you have at least two or three names or two or three places that are have such memories for you. Uh, Plum Village does for me, Way does for me, Kyoto does for me, Nairobi does for me. So know the places in the world that you can call up in your memory that makes you feel connected to humanity. Make sure that seed is there, that energy is nourished. We also have through our life experience and before life experience imprints, ways of noticing, ways of thinking that seem automatic and seem uh, fixed. And, and so learning when that seed is rising in you. And if that's, oh, well, that's Uncle Jake's voice. <laughs> that's so restrictive. That's not my own voice. So learning to recognize your own sound still aware of the fact that you are not your own. Uh, we are social beings outside and we are social beings inside. And the more skillfulness we can have with the sociality inside of us, it can help us develop more skillfulness in interacting with the sociality outside of us. This is especially true in a, in a global world a planetary world uh, where people and places and stories all are encountering each other in ways for the first time. And so being, developing the sensitivity to know when I need to sit down or take a walk with Ty in the woods, uh, which I still can happily do, uh, know when I need to do that and know to, that I have that resource within me. So take a look at your list and pick one of these seeds, a wholesome one, a nourishing one, an empowering one that you want to enhance in yourself. Put a circle around that.
and know that it's not an entity. <laughs> it's also constructed. And then put a circle around one seed you would like to assist it in returning to less importance in your life, less dominance and influence in your life. And put a circle around that seed. And also remember, it is empty of a separate self and also impermanent. And once you've done that, ask yourself, what is my aspiration for this series? on working with and befriending and caring for my inner community. What is your goal? What is your aim here? And we can stop there. In our next session, we will look deeper at some of the names and beings and places and you may have listed. And we will ask ourselves, what, what is the communication from these energies? coming to us, what's being transmitted to us, what habits, what frames of mind, what states of being are being communicated, arising in us as we encounter it, so that we can choose wisely, which will be session three, choosing wisely what to nourish and what to denourish uh, so that we have all of our energy and glory fully available to us in the present moment. Thank you.